This video will show you how to install the FISIC chip on the OLED. Let's get started. Get the micro SD card. I would like to know if the V6 has compatibility issues with some brands and capacity, but please report it in the comment section if you find one. For the software, I always use my head spec. Get to the GitHub page, select releases, and download the latest version. Open the micro SD card on your computer. Use a cut reader if needed. Then extract the head spec into it. In this video, I'm using a brand new console. It doesn't matter if you have been using it for a while as it is irrelevant to this guide. Insert the micro SD card into the console. Turn the console on and follow the initial setup if your console is brand new. And update the console if the recent firmware is hackable. And then turn the console off. Before working with the tablet, I usually install a tempered glass screen protector to protect the original screen from getting scratched while dismantling it. Wet the screen with IPA and wipe the liquid spots with dry wipes. Ensure everything is clean on the surface. No dust, no whisker, no speckles, etc. Get the tempered glass and remove the backliner. Line and center the glass immediately to avoid something trapped between the planes. Press the glass anywhere to stick the glass to the console screen. Remove the bubbles or unattached section by spreading the force evenly. Voila! Now you're good to go! Remove the joy-cons and flip the tablet. Remove the micro SD card. Get a Y00 screwdriver and remove both screws on the corners of the tablet and use the Philips 00 screwdriver to remove the rest of the screws. Get a plastic spudger, slide it into the middle of the back case, and pry it open. Lift the kickstand and use it as a handle to remove the back cover carefully. Continue removing the screws. Use a tweezer to move the network cable and remove a screw under it. And then use the plastic spudger to unlatch the network cable headers. Release the network cable from the tiny hook inside the pit, then lift the metal shield. Before processing the motherboard, I usually clean the existing thermal paste on the metal shield using a plastic opener tool and wipe it clean using a brush, wipes, and a PCB cleaner. Disconnect the battery. Remove the tiny sticker on the game card board, then remove the screw under it. Detach the game card PCB from the main board. Now remove the heatsink screws. And then remove the heatsink entirely. 
And again, I usually clean the heatsink from the existing thermal paste before altering the mainboard. I wet the surface with IPA and wipe it using a paper towel. Clean the CPU cover from the existing thermal paste. And now remove the rest of the screws. Disconnect the fan header and detach the fan. Disconnect the rest of the flex ribbon cables. Use a blunt tweezer to disconnect the left speaker header. Lift the tablet edge cover a bit along with lifting the motherboard. Now get a scalpel or a plastic opener tool to disconnect the OLED screen flex ribbon cable. And finally, use your finger to disconnect the right speaker header. Get a PCB holder and place the motherboard on it. Then get a sharp tweezer to remove the EMMC chip cover. To install the Dead Zero adapter freely, we need to remove the outer edge of the EMMC chip metal frame. Get a cutting plier and cut both corners of the frame. And use your finger to wiggle the cut edge until it is removed from the board. Ensure not to damage the ground patch as we need them to lock the Dead Zero adapter permanently. The V6 includes a revised Dead Zero adapter. This time it comes with a 3 anchors and a slightly redesigned right leg to avoid signal short. So in this video, we do need to alter and cut the tracks below it. And again, I no longer reflow the Dead Zero adapter while installing it. You can read the reason in the description below. Use a tweezer to slide the Dead Zero adapter below the EMFG chip and make sure it is well aligned. Get a multimeter, set it to the diode mode, and measure the value of the C point. You need to place the black probe on any ground point, like the USB port, and the red probe on the C point. You will get a value between 0.500 volts to 0.900 volts. Now apply some flux to the Dead Zero adapter legs. Get a sharp tweezer, push the Dead Zero adapter to generate tension, and lock it by soldering the anchors. Add a drop of flux to the top right anchor and solder it. Get a 6cm wire and solder it to the dead zero point. Then clean the area with IPA or a PCB cleaner. Bend the wire to the right of the EMMC chip and reinstall the cover. And now get a 3cm wire and solder it to the B or the RSD point. And clean the area with IPA or a PCB cleaner. Next, flip the board and remove the CPU cover. Use a straight pin to unlatch these mini locks. Then use a tweezer to remove the CPU cover carefully. Do not lay the tweezer to any components below it, or you will break it. As usual, clean the existing thermal paste of the CPU cover with the help of the plastic opener tool and wipe it clean with IPA or PCB cleaner. These are the location of the mini locks you need to alter. Get a bent nose plier and flip the mini locks inward for the cableway. Next, Clean the thermal paste debris on the top of the CPU and wipe it clean with IPA or a PCB cleaner.
Now, cut one edge of the CPU frame from coast to coast to refill the D or the CLK point. Clean the area with IPA or PCB cleaner. Add a tiny drop of flux to the D point. Begin exposing the track with the mini grinder. Please do it carefully and lightly to avoid damaging the signal track. Wipe and clean the area with IPA or PCB cleaner. Add a tiny drop of flux to the D point. Thin the track with a good solder wire. Get a 3cm Teflon wire and expose the conductor in one end. And use a scalpel to cut the hanging jacket from the wire. Now pass the wire through an opening right below the mini lock. Bend the wire a bit and solder it to the D point. Add a drop of flux and thin the A point a bit. Wipe and clean the area with IPA or PCB cleaner. Get a 2cm Teflon wire and solder it to the A point. Do not overheating the A point, or you will damage the tiny resistor. Rotate the board and let's focus on the big capacitor to install the 3.3 volts line. Add a tiny drop of flux to the left side of the capacitor. And thin that point a bit. Get a 3cm Teflon wire and solder it to the capacitor. Wipe and clean the area with IPA or PCB cleaner. Wipe and clean the area with IPA or PCB cleaner. Get the CPU flex ribbon cable and align the holes with the capacitors on the CPU. Add some flux to the solder points. Then solder those points. Use a tweezer to flatten the flex ribbon cable towards the CPU. Wipe and clean the area with IPA or PCB cleaner. Protect the solder pads with a layer of Captain tape. Apply a drop of thermal paste to the center of the CPU. And reinstall the CPU cover. So this is the V6 BUT kit. It has the same function as the previous variants, but has faster data processing and is more stable. We can use it on the V2, Light, and OLED. Apply a double-sided tape to the back of the mod kit. And remove the release liner. Place the mod kit on the top of the CPU cover. Then connect the CPU ribbon cable to the mod kit. I did the FPCP kit because it has an interference issue that could prevent the console from booting the OFW or the SysMMC. Before soldering the wires, please add a drop of flux to the solder pads and thin it. And then start to solder the wires.
clean the solder pads with IPA or a PCB cleaner. And finally, let's solder the B point. Now let's measure the solder point's diode value. Put the black probe on any metallic surface and the red probe on the solder point. The point is shorted if some of the solder points have about zero fault. Please inspect the solder pads and fix them before powering the console. Here is how the mud kit installation looks like. Now place the motherboard back into the chassis. Please reverse what we have done earlier. Stick a layer of captain tape to cover the mud kit. Connect the battery. Then turn on the console. The LED blinks faster initially, then pulls yellow with an intermittent green color. In the end, you will see a purple, then ends with a green. And you will see the Matkit logo on the screen. Before putting everything back together, it is wise to check the Joy-Cons connectivity. Put the Joy-Cons on the tablet and boot to the OFW by pressing both volume buttons. When everything is good, you can turn off the console. Remove the Joy-Cons and let's continue to assemble the console. Apply a drop of thermal paste to the top of the heat sink. Then continue to reassemble the console. Press the power button again to check if the mod is intact.
These are the basic features of the V6. Turning on the console without the micro SD card will show you the SD loader screen. Pressing the power button on this screen will turn the console off. If you want to boot to the OFW, press and hold both volume buttons, then press the power button. When you are at the SD loader screen, pressing both volume buttons will also boot the console to OFW. And now let's insert a micro SD card containing the head spec. I haven't set up the MUMMC for this console, so let's launch the SysMMC instead. When you super zoom the V6 saddle pads, you can see that the distance between the saddle mask and the pad is too close. So please do not put a lot of solder into it, or you will short the signal like this. To fix this issue, please apply some flux to the infected area, remove the solder blob, and solder the wire carefully. After cleaning up the solder, please check the diode value using a multimeter and make sure you see the correct reading, not zero volts. What will happen if a 3.3 volt point is not connected to the mod kit? Will the console boot? Let's find it out. No signal of life, and the console won't turn on. Seems dead. Now let's try disconnecting the point D wire and observe the reaction. The kit blinks white several times and it boots to the OFW. And now let's move on to point A. What will happen if it loses connectivity? It is the same as the point D reaction. The white LED blinks several times and it boots to the OFW. Next, we cut the point C wire, and let's see the reaction. The LED seems to blink purple infinitely. Let's wait a while. And after a while, you see a blinking red light. 
As it stops, the console boots to the OFW. We will see the reaction if we disconnect the point B wire. The reaction is similar to point D and A wire. It blinks white several times and it boots to the OFW. I'm now trying to simulate if we didn't solder the SP1 and the SP2 point correctly on the CPU. Will it blink purple infinitely? Let's find it out in a moment. After a while, it blinks blue three times and it boots to the OFW. These LED patterns are not perfect, but at least for now, you know what to inspect when you encounter some issues. Honestly, this mod kit needs improvement, on the physical and the software sides. Every kit has the same function and goal, exploiting the console. The HWFly is already major, and the Pico is trending, but since the physics price is very reasonable, I suggest you grab it, then risk your console using an improper DIY style product. Chip is just a factor, and only sometimes a solution for every situation. Since you have free will, picking and choosing the fitting mod kit using your logical thoughts rather than pride is the best for this modding job. Finally, thank you for watching this video. I hope you like it, and see you later.